Recently, I have come across this site that teaches Linux like it's a game, with increasing difficulty by levels. Now, I know some Linux, I use Kali, it's no big deal. But I'm no expert and want to challenge myself to finish all 34 levels in a day. Maybe you'll learn something as well. You can find these challenges on Over the Wire, specifically the Bandit War game. Level 0 just wants us to connect to their portal through SSH, which stands for Secure Shell, it's a way to communicate with other endpoints. Level 1 tells us to use the most basic commands like ls, which stands for list and shows all of the files and folders. The cat command reads and edits these files. What we're looking for is passwords to progress to the next level. Level 2 has a file that is named with just a dash, which we need to prefix with dot slash so that the command interprets this as a file name. Level 3 is something similar, where the file name has spaces in between the words. Put those in between some parentheses and it will read as one file. Level 4 includes navigating to a folder. You can use cd, which stands for change directory, followed by the name. If we try to list what's inside, we don't find anything, so we have to use the dash a option for hidden files. Level 5 has 10 files in it. You can open each one to check for the password, but to save some time, you can check the file type and open the one that stands out. Level 6 has much more folders and files and manually brute forcing this would be hell, so there is a hint that comes with this challenge. The file we're looking for is 1033 bytes in size and not executable. So let's use the find command and input the filters. Level 7 has something similar, but this time we're searching the whole server for a file which was created by a user called Bandit7, owned by group Bandit6 and is 33 bytes. There are a bunch of files that we don't have permission to access, but amidst all the barriers there is a valid file path. Drinking game for the word file. Level 8 has a text file that has a bunch of words linked with codes. The hint says that the word we're looking for is millionth, so let's use the grep command, which stands for whatever that is, and is basically the find word option on Windows. Write the word that we're looking for as well as the file name, and it gives what is written on that exact line. You can tell some of these are getting a little technical, so I'm going to speed things up here so that we can get through as many as we can. Level 9, we use a sort command to find one unique line out of a billion. Level 10, the hint says that the password starts with a couple of equal signs, so we use the strings command along with grep to find the specific lines. Level 11 is a simple decode from base64 encoding. Level 12 has a Caesar cipher, which is where you rotate the letter some amount forwards, so if we're using 13 rotations, letter A becomes N, and all we have to do is reverse that rotation using the TR command, which stands for translate. Level 13 was really annoying. The password was hidden under multiple compressions, so it was a cycle of renaming the file, decompressing it, and checking what compression type it is. Level 14 had an SSH key, which I downloaded locally and used as authentication to log in to the next level where we connected to the server's local host through port 30,000 using the nc command. Level 16 gets us to connect to localhost using SSL. Level 17 has a hint that the port we're looking for is between 31,000 and 32,000, so let's run an nmap scan to search open ports and find what we're looking for. Level 18 has two files, a new password and old password. We'll use the diff command to compare and find the difference of the files. Level 19, the server immediately logs us out when we log in, so we'll just execute some commands remotely instead of logging in. Level 20, we notice that we don't have permission to access the password, but there is a user with elevated permissions which has SUID. This means we can execute commands from that user's name and access the password. And that will do it for now. Some of these challenges got a little tedious and I hope you learned something. I know I sure did. I highly recommend you doing these yourself. I left a link in the description to full explanations of theory and step-by-step -step solutions for each level. Knowing and understanding Linux is always a plus even if you're not using it every day. It's like knowing another language. It comes useful very rarely, but boy is it satisfying. On that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.